Hello, everyone. Hey, this is the second part of um, Vision of Sugar Plums. And so uh, we're really having fun. So just a really quick review of yesterday, okay? Um, well, the other video, let's just say it that way, because when you watch me again, it's not yesterday. Um, so we have um, painted a sleepy bear. And if you are on my blog, and you happen to stumble across um, us painting candies today, you um, probably have missed, uh, if you missed the sleepy bear, then you can go back and look for it. It should be very easy to find, okay? But let's um, just an update on what are some of the points, okay? So with painting animals, it's important to go along with the furs, with the way the hair or the fur or whatever the animal has, the skin um, uh, goes, okay, and the form. And so it's very important to paint uh, several crucial points, like the the ear need to look somewhat like a pyramid, okay? And uh, I think this nose here is a boxy nose and uh, need to paint his um, hollowness, but also very, very important to, is to always keep the form of his rounded head ready okay and uh, keep in mind as you were painting that and uh, also this part is actually a little bit harder and so you can uh, go back and look at the video and then the claws are very important right because you know that's part of the you know the bear and I show every single little detail on uh, how to do this part here and I guess uh, Really, the most important part is the snout. If you get the snout down, then they begin to uh, they begin to look like the animal, and with shadows and uh, things like that. So, if you are interested in learning all those things on painting an animal, then I, I really welcome you to look at all of my videos are free. Look at the other videos, and so you can paint along with me, and that will be very fun. Okay, today I'm gonna move this down a little bit with going to paint the all the candies and we'll talk about it and talk about the um, techniques and such and I'm going to have this piece of paper and put it on Mr. Bear so that I won't get him with my arm keep resting on him okay and uh, the most of the color uh, I should go through it uh, I have uh, uh, just a regular uh, cadmium red medium because it's uh, more like a Christmas color it has red and has some yellow in it okay and I will use also cadmium oh, oh wow <laughs> cadmium yellow light trying to get this in the film and French ultramarine and that's for the background and I will use some paint gray um, and also perlene maroon when I need to uh, deepen the color of the red sometimes I also use um, the paint gray for some shadow and I'm going to use burnt umber for this particular yummy over here I think that is a sugar plum if I'm wrong can you you know you guys can correct me and so and some green color uh, but um, uh, I'm going to use burnt umber and I a part of it I'll mix it actually with a black color to darken it or you can mix it with the gray color and then this is a little cookie hopefully when I get down to it and I might use um, the burn umber and mix it with a little bit with yellow so that it's not as dark and then put the chocolate chip chocolate chip is uh, we can use black or yellow um, we don't need to do a lot of details today because I think the bear is the focal point but of course the candies are fun and so when you see orange color I am probably mixing um, mixing uh, the red with more yellow okay so that's uh, usually maybe I will talk about it and then we need to use a smaller paintbrush so whatever smaller paintbrush that you're comfortable with um, and also my trusty old larger one but uh, I'm gonna try and see if I don't need to use that um, I'll see okay and uh, if I don't and I might rotate the um, the painting, the, I have uh, my painting tape onto the cardstock here. I will probably at times need to rotate it because it works better that way with my brain. Okay, 
So let's start, okay? It's, this is really fun, and I hope you can have fun with me, and you guys are having a good day or a more relaxing day, or you might have fun sometime that you can come paint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water, and you can't see that part um, because... Um, you know, I have all my paints. I'll show you maybe if I remember where my paints are in a minute, okay? As I get to them, okay? So, candy cane, very, very easy. And, um, well, okay, I shouldn't say that, but candy cane, and let's um, see if it is easy for you, okay? So, I'm dipping my very, very small brush um, onto my red color, okay? Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I know that, you know, as you can see with the bear, this is turning light, right? And that's how you make the form, make the bear head look like a ball. Okay, so I leave that part as a highlight. And so I need to keep in mind that I'm going to leave this part as a highlight. Okay, and then I'll uh, darken the shadow of that part. Okay, let's just dive in and you see what happened. Okay, so I am, uh, I just realized that as soon as I put my paintbrush down, there's a, a lot of pigment. Okay, and I don't want that. Okay, now you can see that how I am right here, trying to leave the um, the highlight. Okay, but since we are paint, painting such a background subject, and we don't need to worry too much. Okay, so this is how I paint my highlight. I paint over here, and then I paint over there. Okay, and then I like to have double stripes, like a thin stripe of uh, candy, of red candy. Okay, and so that's how, and you will see how this will turn out as I go. Okay, I might come in here and soften that just a little bit, but if you don't want to, it's not even necessary. Okay, okay, and back to more paint. Okay, and paint this part right here. Okay. You can see that I have some drawing. I'm not going to um, put this uh, drawing on here because I think, you know, you can find candy canes and all these confetti, confettis uh, easy. Okay, so I will just let you, okay? Okay, and here it comes. Okay, I'm going to ooh, <laughs> get that out of uh, what I wanted to do a little bit, but that's okay. Just fix it, round it up a little bit, and don't worry too much about that, okay? And here's the highlight I'm leaving. Okay, as it turns. As the candy cane, the shape of the candy cane turns. Okay, and intensify that area just a little bit. Because I like, uh, I like the these confetti to be nice and uh, bright color because they are you know they're not natural elements so you know artificial thing even though it's artificial i'm sure it tastes really good i usually i've i don't think i like to eat candy cane it's just strict candy but i'm sure that it tastes very good for you guys okay and that's the the second turn okay and i'm going to go around here right now okay and uh, okay, let's uh, with this one paint this darker part over here first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint the cadmium red first and allow the paint to dry a little bit, and then I will come back and uh, intensify the color, you know, which I hope I uh, intensify or darken actually. Darken with the maroon color, with the perline maroon. Um, actually, yesterday, our bear, when I paint our bear, it went over. Not went over. It was more than an hour. It's the longest video. Because, you know, I still think that, you know, one hour to paint a bear is, <laughs> is very good. But I hope you guys are okay with uh, me doing that. Okay. You see that there's a line there? Okay, the eye will actually fill in, but uh, for your sake, and uh, I'm going to just come in and do a little bit. 
okay because your eye know what candy cane looks like unless you're not familiar with candy canes and you will usually your eyes will come in and fill in the the line the lost line and the fine line artists especially watercolorists not just watercolorists i guess and oil painters and all of the artists like to do loss and loss line and fine line because it's lost and then it's fine found fine found um it's actually quite fun to do things like that okay all right and that's the third one i hope i'm in the screen so many things to think about and then you also have to think about am i in the screen is people able to see me I hope that also when you um, are ping along with me, if you, um, you know, can't see because I'm very constrained with, you know, the camera and whatever I have. And it's hard for me to zoom in for you, but you can zoom in. Um, there's a few different ways for you to zoom in. Uh, one way is to enlarge the object on the screen i think you can do it that way and then another way is that you can uh you know if you're doing it on a tablet i hope you can have a bigger or a phone but sometimes that's all we have and then you can just uh, zoom in and uh, follow along and then you can see that particular part better okay at least i hope that you can do that that you have the ability to do that okay so you can see um, the eyes will follow this highlight, okay, that I'm trying to leave out. And it will make the candy cane look like a tube. Which is what it is, instead of a flat rectangle, right? Okay, let's uh, go ahead and do this one. You can see that some, you know, I don't know if you can, I hope you can. Sometimes I have a line. I have a line that I draw ahead of time. And many, many times, <laughs> I will change my mind. Because as you paint, as an artist, you see, wow, you know, my original line that I draw is not quite correct, you know, or I don't like it, or the composition doesn't look too well, too good. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and change that while you're painting. Okay, and that is uh, totally a good thing because you don't want to just stick with um, just stick with what you can see. Okay, that's usually not a very very good thing. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to just leave this alone and maybe just put a little bit more red. Red need to be intensified. It is um, when it dries, it dries weaker. I think. Okay, so if you like that. Okay, so our Candy King is almost done. Not quite done yet. When it's dry, I'm going to get some maroon color and darken that and make it more with the shape. Okay, let's uh, paint this. Well, I hope, I think this is a sugar plum, but I'm not sure. But, um, okay, let's just uh, assume that it is. Because, um, you know, do you sometimes felt like... Uh, you know, when people talk about confettis or candies and treats, today we don't eat the same candies and treats as they, um, as they, uh, as they do in ancient time. And I felt bad, but sometimes ancient times, uh, candies are hard to make. It takes a long time. I'm uh, just trying to mix up the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a burnt umber with a little bit of black, okay, to go do this part because this part is um, further away, a little bit further away from the light. And so I like it darker and stronger. Uh, years ago, when I first uh, met some really nice people that uh, they actually share the gospel of Jesus Christ with me and they're a member of our church and um, uh, that Christmas, she actually invited me to go make divinity with her.
because at Christmas time, we like to um, sometimes make treats, and nowadays we only make uh, cookies. Okay. Now, if that's not dark enough, the uh, the tone here after I paint this area, I will actually come down and add some more darker color. Okay. But we will see as I'm moving towards. I know that this brush may be just a tag um, too, a little bit too, um, what do you call that? A little bit too uh, small for the job right here. I actually have a one size that's a little bit bigger. That probably will do better, but I'm too lazy and I'm, I'm happy. This is my, this uh, brush is, uh, I went to uh, Blix Art to get it and it actually is not cheap. Um, with a small brush like that. I don't remember. I must have paid ooh, $20 for it. It's a synthetic uh, round from uh, Princeton Aqua Light. I like it because the point is so sharp. I think one day I might do a video and show you all of my... Okay, so since the, the whipped cream or the frosting come down onto this area, right? So we wanted to make sure that that part is uh, dark, darker, okay? And so it looked more like a shape of a ball instead of uh, a flat uh, patty, <laughs> a flat <laughs> so <-called. laughs> Okay, so I wanted to put some cherry on top of this uh, sugar plum. And so uh, what I will actually do, and which I promise, in the last video when I was uh, from now on I will um, have the finished painting so you guys actually have something to follow to look at as you're following along I think that will help I'm putting some little bit of cherry on top okay so you can see that I don't know if you can I'm leaving a little bit of highlight okay that's just the white I'm leaving a little bit over there so that the cherry look more like a ball I am actually uh, 56 years old now, and so sometimes it's hard for me to see. But for some reason, if I'm under the sunlight and I'm painting to a lot of light, I can actually see. You can see that, um, you know, I don't know if you can see that my brush is actually bent. You know, for some reason, that those kind of things doesn't bother me. It's still very good to me, uh, for me to use that, of course, you know. I think I'm just used to it when I was younger, um, painting, and uh, I'm used to... Um, I'm used to... Uh, I'm painting a leaf on it now. I'm used to uh, uh, just uh, working. I'm hard on my brushes, right, as I've told you guys that. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm used to painting with uh, brushes that are bent because I'm hard on them and so <laughs> it doesn't really bother me. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to imitate here is a holly and the berries. But since it's candy and confetti, I guess we don't really have to really worry about the fine details. So, it's just a suggestion of some leaves and berries there, and then you're good. But I think it need a drop of yellow in there, so it's not so dark and blue, okay? Wow, I'm already seeing that my hand is getting on this part, but that's okay, you know, when I'm painting. So I need to be a little more careful and cover and protect the part that I have, because um. You know, as watercolorists, you're walk working with water, right? And I have a towel here yesterday. My painting got too wet, and so now I have a towel here. And so my hand rests on there. But that's okay. You will see that when we're done. You won't be able to see the mark that I have mark on it. And so what I'm doing now is I'm coming over here and lightly, lightly let you use some paint spray. And let you see that there's an outline to this confetti, to this uh, sugar plum, okay? Now, on this side is darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a little bit of a shadow on this side. That's just uh, the way to get the form looking better. Okay, and I think 
you know, you're barely picking up any Pikmin, right? And then you're just trying to go do that and that just let people see that, oh, there's some shadow there and make the form rounder. At least that's what we're attempting to do and I'm going to put some shadow over there too, okay? So you know that this area is where the sun come in and this area is where the, you know, you will be able to see a shadow just like here, right? So this shadow extends to this area and it's darker and it makes it look uh, better. Like a confetti, like a, a cupcake or, you know, I don't know what they call that today if they were to make something like that. Okay, put some shadow over here too. Because it's coming down, okay? And then I leave um, most of this area, this area over here white. And I'm just going to drop some shadow here. Drop some paint spray as, as uh, you can see it's shadow, okay? And I think that that sugar plum is done. Okay, so... Um, let's, uh, as we're working and my red is still wet over there, I'm going to, <laughs> I saw this twirly. Okay, so where, where I find this inspiration is I have a very old book and the name is Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I think that's very, uh, you know, everybody know about that story. And all through the house, not a creature was stirring, right? And so, um, the children were all nestled and in their bed with a vision of sugar plum dancing in their head. Okay, so that's where I got the inspiration. And so I saw this piece of candy there. And I had no idea what this is. I really have no idea what this is. <laughs> and I think that might be some kind of uh, ancient, kind of like candy cane because it has swirl, you know, and so I'm assuming this is candy cane. Uh, you know, the same with white candy and and so I saw this piece of candy and I thought, oh, it's pretty. I think I'm going to just, you know, take that piece of candy and draw that, okay? Yeah, and so that's the only um, reference that I know. Okay, now, this part with this facing, right? So I'm facing the light coming in, so I'm going to take care to leave a highlight, okay? Wow, this brush uh, is very nice. You can paint detail, but it you can hardly sometimes pick up uh, pick up the color and the pigment. Okay, but that's okay. We can deal with things, right? Okay, so that's where I wanted to leave the leave the highlight. If you can see that, I leave a little bit of white. Okay, because the brush are not picking up a lot of pigment, so I need to come back and intensify that okay and this white part here is what i like to think of a highlight that i'm leaving okay and then let's uh go back and do the swirl inside wow okay let me wet my color because this uh paintbrush is hardly picking up any pigment it's hard to Hard to paint like that, okay? The swirl go in like this. I would love to hear from you if you guys know about all the names of these, these uh, older candy that I am finding. You know, sometimes I find um, like uh, when I was painting the bear, I did uh, talk about where I find the inspiration of my things. I go through a lot of books, a lot of pictures. I see a lot of art. And so what I do is I will just, um, wow, sometime for my own composition to finish, I could use, um, I could be using a uh, five to 10 a reference, sometimes it's pictures, sometimes photograph before. So it's all my creation, right? And my, uh, my, uh, what do you call that? My composition 
and my design. Yeah, I think those are the words that I wanted to use. And that's very good because, you know, I never have to fear that I am actually copying people. You know, exactly copying people. Because um, I like to, uh, when I finally come up with a... Um, okay, so what I'm doing is this... Uh, this um, candy look like a patty. Okay, so I'm darkening the bottom part. And it will look more like a patty. Uh, not darkening, I mean putting on shadow, you know, shadowing. Shadowing the bottom part so it look more like a patty, okay? Uh, but mainly, this is white. This area is actually white. Isn't that fun that we can do that? Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of the paint gray and come over here and add a little bit of shadow over here so that you can see the circle and then see it turn okay and I need, need a little bit over there so that it doesn't it looks like it's a continuation okay because if I don't do this part over here, then it will that area will stick out. Okay, look, um, that is done. Um, I might go in uh, with a little bit of maroon and just uh, darken this area a little bit so it's more maroon. You can see the different color of red over here. Okay, and I don't touch it anymore. Okay, because the red wanted to lift. And so, what was the painting? I think it was the Ponsettis that we were, we had a, you guys have an earful of how we have to deal with red, right? So I won't talk about that that much. Okay, I'm coming in here now that the candy cane is dry, okay? And go in this area and put the maroon color in there. And as I do that, uh, you will see that this will go in a little bit and it, the shape will look more like a real candy cane. It won't be as flat, okay? It won't be as flat. Yeah, just put some maroon color over there. Doesn't that stand out now? I hope it does to you guys. <laughs> okay, so the candy cane is actually all together done. Um, I kind of wanted to do uh, this candy over here first and then that pop, uh, lollipop uh, before we come back because then I don't have to... Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. So let's do this candy over here. Okay, I hope you guys uh, uh, can see. We're painting very small stuff, so... It is a little hard, you know, for you to see. And like I tell you earlier... Um, okay, let's do the lollipop first. Okay, let's do the lollipop first. Because then I don't have to cover the... Okay, so with the long, uh, cover the other candy. With the lollipop, I need to turn the painting around. Okay, so the orientation is a little bit better for me. Um, I am, uh, with my brain, I'm a very logical person. And so I indulge it and like to do it um, with uh, logic. Okay, so uh, what I'm talking about is um, you know, I like to paint things as they are in nature and the way I see it, but I think uh, I'm changing brush now because I need a little more uh, intensity in the pigment. Uh, but with a lot of other artists, art, other artists, some artists can actually paint upside down of an object. And um, I'm sure that with practice, I can also do that, but I don't like to. And so I'm indulging myself. See, that's why I paint, I turn the... Okay, so I'm coming in with the yellow. And why do I do that? It's because um, I'm going to try to mix color here in a minute, okay? So I need to work fast. I'm not mixing color on my palette. I'm trying, I'm actually trying to mix color here. And so... In order to mix color, you want the color to be wet, okay? So, uh, as I was uh, practicing, I wanted this lollipop to be 
red going into orange and a little more orangey <laughs> and so I uh, I do that okay I'm trying to mix color and then I wanted to have a little bit of practice with you guys about mixing color on the paper and this is very intense mixing color okay so I will um, talk a little bit about that in the in a second in the bottom part okay and make sure that you also reserve your highlight okay leave the highlight because that's still the that, that area is still where the light come in right and so even when you turn your painting you should uh remember where the light is coming from i know being an artist you have a lot of things in your mind while you're painting imagine while you're painting and filming at the same time isn't that fun well i actually have a lot of fun Okay, now let's do the second part here and I will talk about this a little bit more about how you need to be careful, okay? Now, so I'm putting the pigment and I'm going here. Okay, if the color runs together right now, it's okay, don't worry. Don't worry because as you remember, if you remember when we were painting the Ponsettas, I talked about, talk about how to, don't worry about it and then we'll come in with... Uh, with maroon as in this case to separate them okay so that is my plan if the color runs together okay now as I'm going into the yellow okay there's a little bit of pigment of red in my in my brush and I go over there so the yellow is not already that yellow anymore it's a little bit of darker yellow and going into orange okay and so if you guys want to mix color on paper you must have enough pigment to carry you through to the very end, okay? Because now that the yellow is done, then I'm going back into the into the red, okay? And then I'm coming in here. Okay, you can see that, you know, I am... So this part is turning orange, right? And now, also remember the highlight, okay? The highlight needs to be leaf open here. Okay, you see that? And then you finish it off because if you come in and re, re dip and things like that, sometimes the <laughs> color will be complaining. It will just say, I don't like it that you're messing with me too much. Okay, so make sure that, okay, so we're following down this circle and down here for the bottom part, okay? So make sure that if you are mixing, you have enough pigment on your dip of your uh, color um, so that you don't redip and then redip redip again because as you do things like that the you will uh, likely to mess up a little bit okay so what I'm when you look at a lollipop okay this part is under that a thicker part okay so there might be a little bit of highlight but it will be over somewhere over there okay not a lot of highlight because this is in the bottom part okay and so I'm just trying to intensify okay and so I think that is enough and we'll leave it alone for now okay and then we'll come down here and work on the work on the uh, the lollipop stick which is very easy Okay, I was just talking to you earlier, and I know that my thoughts just jump here and there. I'm hoping that, you know, since we're just painting some confetti, it won't be so long today, because this is already the second part. Okay, but one will never know as an artist, right? As you paint, well, you might run into problem. And if it is too long for you guys, just... uh. You know, come back. Just remember where you left off and then come back. Okay, very simple. Not too much detail. I actually am giving you guys a lot of detail on this one. It does, it's not necessary that you put in. And let's give him a little bow, okay? Give the confetti a little bow. I'm just going to freehand draw that in. When I mean detail, it's like you don't need to do so much um, highlights. And do you see the big drop of water just drop on 
<laughs> you know, with little brush, you have to be careful because they do that. They hold a drop of water and then they just kind of drop it. Okay, so let's turn back. Okay, turn back our ping ping. And make sure I'm still zooming. Do you like the lollipop? I kind of like it. But we still need to go in and intensify it when the color is dry, okay? And so now that we have done the lollipop, let's do this candy right here. I'm debating. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, the top part use the small brush, and the middle middle part use the bigger brush. Okay. Now I'm wetting my cadmium cadmium a uh, red medium, and uh, make sure that I have enough uh, juicy pigment when I'm doing this. Okay. Now with this one, I think it's just uh, some kind of a candy drop. I have seen this still selling, <sighs> that uh, people still sell this kind out there, so that will be, uh, we'll just call it the candy drop, okay? It's not something that is not familiar to us. Okay, let me pull the painting more towards me so you can see it. Okay, so change to a medium-sized brush. Okay. And try my best to follow that circle line. Just follow that circle line and take care to leave a little bit of a highlight there. This is when your um, skill of uh, drawing and actually using the brush uh almost like a pencil to do drawing is very useful okay because you know why um because uh then you don't need to have so much help in um have so much help in uh in your uh you know, with your brush, just get comfortable and practice and you will find that, you know, with details, things, you don't have to, you know, have a pencil there, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, to draw out the outline for yourself first. Okay. And then we'll keep going. This is uh, what we were talking about earlier, right? Um, the lost line and the fine line. We don't need to. We don't need to fill in all the lines, and the human eye will try to go make sense of everything. Okay, and we're hoping that that is happening here. That is happening with our with this painting here that the human eye is actually trying to make sense of the circle. Yeah, because you're going along with the line and such, and the human eye will actually uh, really want to see a circle, right? That uh, so that it will. It will just make a circle for you. Okay, to be honest with you, I really wanted the pigment to be more intense. So I'm adding some more now. But I don't know if I will uh, be successful or I will fail because um, the area is uh, quite wet now. Okay, I go back here and add more pigment over here. Okay, and then we'll close out this candy, okay, we'll follow that circle line and this bottom part, um, I'm assuming that you won't see a lot, okay, so that's enough, but let's uh, make sure that the pigment is stronger, okay, okay, all right, and we need to come back here and just like what we do a circle we need to kind of 
uh, make a shadow over there okay so it looks uh, then it look more like a circle even um, the line and the shape you know actually help us to see a ball but it's better that if we have um, a little more shadow over there okay so okay let's <laughs> okay let's start on the okay I make sure I am in the picture let's start on the uh, cookie so funny I the cookie is like a flat this right and so what I'm going to do is I'm making burn umber with some yellow ochre I am sure that in my uh, in my color that there are actually um, a color that are more that is more appropriate okay and then I'm going to uh, put some more lighter yellow on it so that it will look like a cookie someone wanted to eat and then I need to put a little bit of red in it too so I'm mixing the color on my palette and I just put too much red <laughs> okay uh, let's not have so much red let's pull out some burn umber okay I think I think we are pretty much uh, good okay and so now I'm coming in here and I'll start with the um, I'll start with the side okay it might look kind of uh, intense right now but I am going to let's leave some highlight over here but since the cookie is actually the side of the cookie going down so you don't want the highlight to be too close to the side okay okay so as the pigment are wearing out then I'm pulling the color to the towards the middle okay so what do you think do you think I did okay with the cookie color I hope so now if I'm really painting a bunch of cookie I probably will go and find uh, more cookie color uh, better cookie color or do some more research on cookie this is um have i ever painted cookie before i'm thinking have i ever painted paint something that's close to a cookie before i don't remember i have pink gingerbread i think that's about the same color right Okay, and that's the highlight. I'm very, very, very happy with this. Okay, and so let's change to a smaller brush. And what I'm going to do is go straight into the the burn umber color. Okay, and I'm going to intensify the edge and soften it. You know, because there's uh, there's water in it right now, so it just kind of like to soften itself, right? So what I'm trying to do is make the cookie look like is. Uh, what is the description word? A little bit of a dome. So it's not a flat cookie. A little bit of a dome. Okay. And I think it's looking more a little bit like a dome. Oh, wow. Do you see that? A big drop of water just dropped into my thing. Okay. Let's uh, make sure I get rid of that. And so I think it's looking like a cookie. <laughs> but you know what? I'm getting my, my brush into the burn umber. And what I'm going to do is I'm cleaning up the edge. Because there's some feathering on the edge and I don't like that. So I'm going in to make sure that the edge is nice and smooth. But of course, the cookie edge are not always nice and smooth. But in this case, I guess I'm a little fussy about it. like, um, I wanted it to be nice and smooth. Okay, so that's good. And for me, I think for this, I'm 
going to use very very dark uh, black and put a little dab of uh, brown burn number in it and I'm going to just uh, make little dots here and there and make it look like a chocolate chip I guess chocolate chip is somewhat round but it doesn't have to be right And some of it will be on the edge and some will be smaller looking than others okay that's my cookie okay is he dreaming about cookie you see that okay we have um now we have two more to go over here and the cupcake and the, um the cupcake and the um the Fat candy king, the tube candy king. No, candy. I guess it's not a king. <laughs> okay, now, um, you know what? I'm not, uh, maybe I won't do this one because we are kind of, or should I do it very fast? And then because I wanted to show you the background, let's do the cupcake. Okay, let's do the cupcake and I'm rotating this so that the orientation to me and trying to keep you guys in the in the camera okay so I'm going to put in a little bit of a pink color for the cupcake holder okay and in order for it to not uh, stand out so much this is a magenta color I'm going to put in a little bit of the red to mix it up okay and just do this really fast and not uh, worry about too much about the detail this time okay because um, it's not necessary. I guess I have uh, spent a lot of time and worry about the details of things and so the video become long. But I hope you guys are um, having fun and getting a lot of tips and having fun painting with me um, so that uh, it will be a fun and enjoyable time for you. At least I hope that you are enjoying it. Okay, you can tell that my brush is uh, sometimes I forgot to change brush when I'm painting the detail, and so my brush is uh, <laughs> actually, you know, drying up for the job. Okay, now I'm having a clean brush and just pulling the pulling the color to the middle. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay, at the very very top, I'm going to also put three cherries there. Okay. And so, just like what I did earlier, okay, make sure that there's enough pigment here. Okay, and so what I'm going to do, just like what I do with the sugar plum on the other side, but this cherry might be just a tag bigger. Okay, just uh, as you go, leave some highlight. Leave some highlight, but I think people know a cupcake and they um, they can tell they will register these are cherries so we don't have to worry about too picky on ourselves and working too hard okay okay and then let's put uh, what we had earlier what we did earlier the same put some holly leaf on it here very quick because I have shown you slower motion over there so I'm going to go faster over here okay Okay, so that's uh, a lot of light green. Wow, and my detail brush is just full of um, water, so I'm trying to drop some dark green over here, okay? Not much detail, okay? Not much detail. Just a suggestion of a leaf there, and then go drop. <laughs> my uh, dark green has a puddle over there right now so it's very very hard for me to pick up the color okay and so I'm still using my detail brush and go to the pinks gray in my palette and um, I'm going to 
pick up the shadow. Okay. <sighs> My brush is uh, strong and then it's not with uh, picking up the color. And so you can see me, I'm struggling with um, not having enough pigment here, okay? Now with whipped cream, all you have to do is like, what, what I'm doing is actually painting shadow. Okay, if that makes sense. Because whipped cream is white, right? And so what I'm going to do, what I'm actually doing is making shadow here and there. Because the whipped cream, since it's white, it will cast a pink gray, kind of grayish blue shadow. And that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do, and then people will know that that's whipped cream. Okay, since my small brush is giving me <laughs> uh, so much, okay, I'm going to uh, change to just that little bigger brush. Okay, and so what I'm doing is I'm making uh, an orange color for the cupcake. Because that's what I decided to do. So this is part of a plan because uh, I want all the color and I'm taking care to leave a highlight there, okay? I'm, I want all the color to be consistent. That means, um, you know, and the only one that stand out is the pink because the pink is by itself, you know, and I am trying to uh, make things consistent with the yellow and the, and then we talk about that all the time, right, in my painting that I think is important to keep things consistent. Okay, I'm putting a little red there so it look darker. And then what I'm going to do is go to the paint screen now and uh, do a little line of shadow so that you can see the cupcake casts a shadow onto the cupcake holder, okay? Just slightly, okay? If um, everything were working just great, I would have waited until the cupcake is totally dry. But I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going back to the paint color with my small brush. And uh, finish up the cupcake line, the holder line over here. Okay. Just finish that up and intensify the area on this side a little bit. Okay. So I hope that cupcake looks nice and yummy to you. Okay, so 52 minutes. Okay, let's do, um, I'm fanning the cupcake. Say cupcake, hurry and dry. I'm gonna put the paper on top of you. Okay, let's do this candy and then we will um, do the background with you quickly. Okay, the candy, the, this candy is some sort like the candy cane, okay? So we're gonna go. You know that what the problem I'm just experiencing is the lack of pigment, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, let's uh, do what we just did. We're not going to, we're doing the loss and fine line and also leaving highlight, okay? So, leaving some highlight over here. I would say with this painting, the most struggle that we are seeing that I'm having is not enough pigment because I'm using this fine brush. It's a line brush and I'm struggling hard or I would have gone a little bit faster. Okay, let's put a C8 one. Pick up the red pigment over there. And then maybe a little bit so that uh, you're helping the people find the lines. Okay, this is not intense enough. So I go in and intensify it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Take 
here to leave the highlight. Okay, that has a lot of pigment. I can tell, but it's not moving because I don't have enough. Um, uh, the brush is very dry. Okay, so I'm trying to get better and fix it. <laughs> the struggle of the painting with a fine brush. So that's what we should name it. <laughs> if the if the brush is not the right size for the job, there's two struggles as you can see. The struggle of not having enough pigment. Or the struggle or with um, having too much uh, pigment and water and you make a big mess and you know for me I prefer not having enough pigment problem than making the big mess with too much uh, like using too big of a brush for a small job that's what I'm trying to say yeah but um, and since uh, I am trying to hurry uh, you can always see that at the end of the painting, I always try to hurry. I don't know why. It's just something that I... But if I one day I get a message from you guys and say, Hey, Kathy, you don't have to hurry. Then I won't. <laughs> okay, and so this is the bottom part. You can see you can see how I, you know, I used too small of a brush for the job. Okay. <laughs> just too small a brush for the job and I'm using Archer's watercolor paper by the way and I never like really tell you guys that and Archer's watercolor paper are very thirsty when it's dry it's very thirsty okay wow so sorry I tried to hurry okay let's put some shadow over there okay um over this candy over here I hope you are okay so we're just gonna put some pink gray Going through here. Okay. Going through and so suddenly it become a sphere, a ball. I would like to, I call it either way, you know. And I'm hoping that the red color underneath doesn't lift. If it li lifts, then I will use the maroon color. Which I will probably should show you, okay. Just put some maroon color, which is a darker color, because I can see that it does lift a little bit. A darker color over here. Okay, how's that? Does it look more like a ball? I hope so. This should be softer, so I'll come in and soften that part over there. Okay. All right. Um, what did I tell you that? I, oh yes, I told you that I will use the maroon and darken this area because. Um, And this area right here okay because it does uh, it is um, a kind of shadowy area and we need to take care we do things like that and make sure that everything is consistent okay and so all I'm doing is getting some maroon color and come over here quickly so that it looks more like a lollipop okay did I finish everything I think I did that I have promised you Okay, and now I am going to show you how I like to do the background, okay? So this should be um, a quick um, finishing up, okay? So what I'm going to do is uh, I use this uh, big brush. It's a Kolinsky Sable brush I got from England. I mean, they sent it to me. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken um, using paint gray, okay, darken next to our good bear here, and uh, so that he would. Um, we we're trying to paint the atmosphere. I think that's what I should say. The atmosphere right now um, that he is actually um, 
in some kind of a dark area so that we can highlight the when we get to the sugar plum sugar plums or the candies then he is like actually it's almost like a dream and uh, as we go we're gonna drop in French ultramarine with it you know because it is kind of like a dreamy color it's kind of hard to explain but it is like kind of sort of like a dream okay so as I come down here my brush is very very wet and that's fine and uh, as as I'm painting with ultramarine ultramarine and paints gray go very well together I will pick up some so that you know and then pull the color out a lot of water a lot of water okay and I'm pulling the color over here up here too but I'm not I, I'm taking care not to put a lot of color because I think when I was painting the bear I told you that I'm going to use the background to help us and so that's what I'm doing right there okay don't get too close to the head of the bear okay but still having your gray color there don't get too close to his head because you want this to be kind of disappearing into the background okay so that's the effect that I'm trying to do okay so I'm pulling out with a lot of water okay you might not be able to see that so that's why I am saying it and then I can drop in the ultramarine color because it's <laughs> it's a dream color it's a dark color it's a snow color Ultramarine is just awesome color. Okay. Like, uh, I think when we do the poncettas, we know that the red kind of like to come out and disperse. But that's okay in this case because Y is in his dream. So in the dream, not everything is a strict line. Okay. So if the red want to come out a little bit, and that's okay. And we have, you know, ways to avoid those kind of things okay so let's drop um, a lot of color when it's next to the the candies let's drop a lot of color uh, lighter color that's what I mean when we're next to the candy let's drop a lot lighter color because then you will see that the it's almost like the, um, he's dreaming. It highlight them and then make them glow, okay? I think that's the words I wanted to use and make the candy glow and then highlight them. A little bit better. At least that, that is what I think. <laughs> that's what I think dream is like. Except we don't want nightmare, do we? Nope, not nightmare. Okay, now over here, where I'm going, I'm going to do the ultramarine and the dark now because I'm actually framing the candy. That's what I'm doing. As if in his dream, ultramarine and pink gray here, okay? I'm uh, giving the candy a frame. So it's not highlighting them, it's actually framing them. So his dream go up here and then he caught everything inside of his head in his dream. <laughs> okay, in order to have the color consistent, I wanted to put some red over there. Okay, let's uh, keep working. Ooh, I'm doing gray. So let's come over here. I just pick up a big bunch of gray color. I don't want to waste it. So we're coming over here and framing his dream, okay? Or his surrounding and you can see that I'm quite bold over here I'm not worried about getting the gray onto the bear because you know what you don't have to you don't have to worry okay the beauty of watercolor the beauty of painting you don't have to worry and I'll show you over there what I'm gonna do in just a sec oh yeah ultramarine I was wondering where's my ultramarine okay Okay, so I'm getting close to the cookie, and so I want the dream effect of yellow, 
highlighting the cookie come back over here okay and then I'll drop some red okay now in order to make the painting consistent remember I was talking about I use some magenta and so the magenta need to be presence in his uh, in the background in his dream okay and that make things more consistent because I choose to do magenta and so I'm gonna pull the color over here okay and now we're getting to the frame of the dream so we want it a little bit darker isn't this fun okay so we're framing his dream by the way um so my daughter is telling me mom you uh do all this painting for video and you know we should sell it and so that's what we're gonna do i'm going to put these uh probably as christmas card and eight by ten but if you want original then would you just email me but it's also very very good if you um, do it yourself too and i won't be offended <laughs> <laughs> that you say, hey, Kathy, I'm just going to do this myself. I don't really want to buy it, you know, and that's fine, too. Okay, so I'm coming down to here. So I'm making this uh, wet, but not very wet, and the wetness go into the bear's face, okay? And so I'm going to put ultramarine there instead of the gray, okay? And so as I drop in the color, because I put some color over there, so it just kind of blend everything in if that makes sense it blend everything in and uh, some of the ultramarine will actually blend into the face of the bear okay that will help you as i say i was going to show you how to do that in this video when i was painting the bear it will help you make the bear look more rounded and that part of his face is just inside the background over here that's what i'm talking about okay and if i drop a little bit of more uh, ultramarine and then some of the ultramarine eventually will make it to his face the beauty of watercolor right okay let's put a little bit more red over here over here let's do some yellow Let's do some yellow, and that looks good. Okay, and I'm going to just capture his dream and not let the candy king escape with some gray over here. <laughs> not let his uh, Christmas treat escape. I don't even know if Bear will wake up for their treat for Christmas. And I would put a fish here but I decided not to because that will take a um, longer time. Okay, let's make sure the sugar plum doesn't escape over here, okay? Let's trap her in a little bit inside the dream, okay? Okay, so the background is pre pretty much done and I might go in and intensify it so it look a little bit darker. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm going to finish this video and say goodbye, is I'm going to put in some of this uh, drops of candy on it just to make it more candy more candy ish <laughs> and more full in his dream okay and so I am just very grateful that you guys come and watch me and uh, I really love comments um, and uh, and whatever you guys can suggest for me, I would love that. And I would love that you guys go look at my shop, but no pressure. You know, that's not what this is all about. I really want to share my uh, love of painting with you guys. That's why I am. That's why I do this videos for free. Because I think it'll be really fun. And you guys can have fun and become my friends. And I love uh, being friends with you. And... Uh, so I'm going to stop here so that um, I can go do more gum drop at that little drop. Maybe, yeah, maybe they're gum, maybe they're not. <laughs> and then uh, this reel will go up in Instagram and it will be in my, in also in Pinterest and it will be in my, uh, 
in my um, blog ready for you guys to follow along or just watch it if you wanted to i love you all thank you so much you have a very good day okay thank you bye